Hey, I'm Lydia Isnanto and this is Dreampreneur's Chat. It's a show where I chat with dream chasers all around the world who make their passion their paycheck, loving the risk they took and the job they do. 30 radiation, 4 chemo treatments, and 4 surgeries. She is a cancer survivor, a photographer, cinematographer, speaker, educator, and owner of Unashamed Imaging. When you really learn to like love yourself and tap into what you're good at, there's endless things that you figure out. It's like, oh, I can do this, I can do that. And then you just you love yourself even more because you're like, okay, I want to discover more about me. In a world where you can be anything, Anisha Collins strongly believes in being herself because you don't have to be perfect to inspire others. Hey guys, thank you so much for tuning in and welcome back to the Dreampreneur's Chat Show. And right now I have an honor to interview Anisha Collins. Yeah, I'm so excited to hear uh, and to uh, chat with you because uh, basically we have a lot of things in common. <laughs> and uh, I do a lot of videos and I can see that you do a lot of wedding videos as well. That's amazing. So yeah, so tell us a little bit more about you. I've been shooting for about say about eight years. Um, I started doing like, I would say commercial work and then I fell in love with weddings and I've been doing it ever since. I still do like branded and, and non-wedding work on the side. Um, or I should say like out of season, but um, otherwise like weddings is primary. And then um, I teach also a lot on video marketing. Tell us a story of how do you find your passion at first? Oh, <laughs> um, I, I started volunteering with a church organization. Okay. Um, so doing a lot, like a lot of concert and not getting paid for it. Just, I was actually, selling their merch and they weren't making money because I was like, merch, I don't do yeah. <laughs> merch. <Yeah. laughs> um, and then one day I actually grabbed my mother's camera and um, was like, hmm, I like this. I was in like my own little bubble and in the zone. I mean, I wasn't antisocial, but I just felt like this was me um, and I haven't stopped ever since. How did you start your business? Like, uh, how did you make your passion into a business? Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the story that I always tell everyone they're like that's it I'm like yeah sorry I don't have like a a big like and this happened and the sky fell and no, it's not my story <laughs> I literally <laughs> just woke up and um it was something that I honestly like kept asking God for and he just made it happen and the message that I got was just do it like almost simple like Nike <laughs> um and literally like my my very first camera like it was on sale, the bundle, everything I needed. And I just would work every piece of equipment I wanted. Like I would work for it. So if I wanted that new lens, I'd book something that was worth the amount of that lens. Uh, and just haven't stopped since. <laughs> so how long have you been doing this business actually? Oh. So legally I'd say eight and then, you know, getting the LLC and set up like a real business. Um, and then hobby wise, and like I said, the volunteer years, it would probably be a total of like 11 or 12. So, um, all right, so for this uh, past eight years, you have been uh, doing a lot of uh, weddings, events, and all that. Um, so what is the challenge that you encounter? So the biggest challenge I've encountered um, is having to battle cancer. Um, so that was came out of nowhere. I was at, actually at like the peak of my career, and then all of a sudden I just felt ill. Um, thank goodness, um, I beat that, but I'm still in what they call like remission. So I'm kind of having to do different things. And, um, if I have to have any type of chemotherapy done again, it would really be preventative to help spread. Um, but what kept me afloat, honestly, was my video marketing. I had tons of video content that I did beforehand, um, planning, just, having a strategy and just not winging it um, kept me still top of mind where people was, were still asking um, for me to come and shoot. And I would just tell them like, I can't do it right now, but if you, you know, have a later date or whatever, I'm, I'm there. Um, so that would be like the biggest challenge. And then um, I would say probably like education, like I figured out like education is really important. And I think people get like to a certain point in their business and they're like, I don't need to learn anything because I've made it. <laughs> Um, and so once I figured that out, those were like two things that I would say two obstacles that I had to overcome. Um, and then 
I just been like running ever since and hoping, you know, God continues to let this be my purpose, but he's expanding now the speaking part, (laughs) which I didn't expect to happen. (laughs) So that's pretty cool. So Anisha, I know that you have a cancer and you're a survival of two time cancer. So uh, this is really very, um, I mean, I feel very touched, uh, especially if you, you know, like you own your own business and um, despite of your sickness, you still keep going through. Uh, maybe you can tell us more the story about your uh, sickness, your cancer. I got diagnosed March 23rd of 2018. Um, so yeah, it was stage three, I can tell you that much. So bad. Um, but I had like no symptoms or anything like that. Um, and then all of a sudden it just, I would always feel tired though, but I thought it was just cause I'm a workaholic and I just love what I do. And I like sleep who needs sleep. <laughs> um, now when my body's like, Hey, you, you need sleep. I'm like, good night. <laughs> um, so yeah. So just, um, telling family like, Hey, something's not right. And then I'm going to go get checked out. And you know, that's what it turned out to be, unfortunately. But fortunately I had good doctors who were like, Hey, this is the plan. It's not going to be easy. But what, from what they said, I went through the hardest treatment that I could have had. Cause some people just had like chemo or some people just had radiation. I had both at the same time. Cause they had to hit it like heavy, um, because of how advanced it was. So, just going through that, honestly, like, I know this is going to sound really, really, really weird, but I've had actually more of a blessing having cancer than not. I learned a lot about myself, a lot about people, um, a lot about life, giving back, um, focusing on what really matters and letting go of things that are petty because pettyville is pretty much the world we live in. (laughs) Um, So it just really opened my eyes to focus on what was important and taught me a lot about myself, um, things that I didn't value. Like I'll just share something real transparent. Like at one point I hated my body weight. I just felt like I was really, really skinny. This was before losing 30 pounds in a month, (laughs) um, unintentionally. And I remember like, I would go to the mall and I'd tell my mom like, Oh, do I look like her? And my mom like, no. And she finally got tired of it. And then when I got sick, it was like, Oh, now you do have, you know, so it made me really pull back the curtain and say, you need to love yourself. And it actually, like, I was afraid to come out and talk about it, um, but actually like helped my business. So God has a way of using bad for good sometimes. <laughs> yeah, de- definitely. I think you give a testimony in your Instagram about your uh, cancer, um, you know, you have survived this cancer. It's actually right. basically is recently that you're on wow in the midst of you still have this business and yep wow yeah then, so everyone's writing to me like how the heck did you yeah. just like went through that and then yeah. you pop back up like like it was a vacation and i'm like mm-hmm. i was just determined like I was, it, mm. I, it was no part of it was easy like one of my friends actually wants to do a documentary on me because he wants to really show people like what i went mm. through no yeah. no part i would never tell anyone oh yeah it's just chemo and radiation None of it is easy. No part. Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just blessed that he still has a purpose for me. That's kind of all I could say. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, um, how do you handle the physical part? You know, like, um, yeah, especially <laughs> wedding. It takes a lot of, uh, of your physical, you know, to really do the job. Yeah, like. I was at the point where I was just like eating baby food because I couldn't eat anything solid, or even when I would try, it would just come back up. Um, and so my mom was like, okay, I'm going to make you like kale shakes, like whatever I could handle. And then we finally got a medication that was able to help me to hold in more. And then that, that's when I started like really picking back up because you need the nutrition to boost your body, um, back up. So I would just say the radiation, like a lot of people don't know that even though like somebody may have finished radiation, like it stays in their body for like six to eight months after it's done. So it's still working. And so you can have muscle pain, you can have bone pain, which is like the worst. Uh, and so those days I just kind of like mentally prepare myself and then, um, if it turns into a physical, then I might take something like a Motrin, but 
that's like over the counter, which lets you know, like I'm pretty much dealing with it. Um, but it, thank God it hasn't been anything where I'm like in the fetal position, <laughs> um, on the floor. But, um, like I said, it just pushes me in and, um, I get to go to the hospital and I see kids who are younger than me. And like today, for example, I went, um, and, um, I met, I think he was like 13 and he's got two years, two years of chemo. Um, I had six months and he just still bright eyed, you know what I mean? I just gave him like a fist pump basically to say like, you inspire me. Um, because it's, it's, it takes a toll on the body. I mean, it's pretty much poison. Um, you know, and the, the bad thing about chemo and radiation is your, your body doesn't know the good cells don't say, Hey, let's go over here. Cause it's for those guys. Like it attacks everything. So you have to replenish and, you know, they, there's meds that they give you to help you like increase your white blood cell and things like that. Um, but I think as long as you can stay hydrated and control your like the vomiting and things like that, I was still shooting weddings when I was going through it. Nobody, nobody knew one of my highest viewed weddings right now was my first day radiation. Nobody knew I just pushed through. And I think like being able to still like do what I love kind of distracted me too from like just wallowing in the fact that I have to go through this. Yeah, and I saw that you have this uh, live videos education uh, kind of a program. For. Mm -hmm. So is that uh, recently that you found that idea or you have no, done it before? Okay. I started the video, I was always doing video marketing, but I never like took it to the level that it's on now. Uh, and like mm. I said, that. I feel like God was like, you know what? She can handle chemo radiation. So I'm going to put this on her probably too. Um, and just, I really like video marketing. And so I would just keep doing it. And um, it's just growing and it's helping a lot of people. And I'm, it's weird. Like I'm probably equally passionate about weddings as much as I am about video marketing. So, which is rare, you see like one, you know, takes the back seat or whatever. Yeah, that is amazing. I mean, like from your story, like, you know, like you, even though you have this um, cancer and you've mm -hmm. gone through all the chemo and uh, all the tough mm -hmm. stuff, but then you still have, your passion is not dies. It's even a right. florist as if, it's not only limited to on the day of wedding day shooting, but mm -hmm. you also flourish into like education, you know, like mm -hmm. live videos where you can do it uh, behind of the computer, you know, like I can see like you are really created to be to create, you know, like you, uh, you've been called to create, like no matter what you've gone through, like you have always be able to make your passion um, shining. It's yeah. funny you say shining because um, I was, I, when I was a nurse, this is back mm -hmm. in the day, um, I was taking care mm -hmm. of a patient and he was like, do, do you know that your name is Indian? And I was like, no, it's just the name my mom gave me. And he said, well, in Indian, it means the light. And so I found wow. it funny how you were saying like, continue to shine, you know what I mean? It's like, but sometimes your light could be too bright for some people and you have to kind of like mm -hmm. say, oh, well, it's my light. And I'm not dimming it. <laughs> yeah, and I like uh, the way you say, you know, like when I read about you in the website. I mean, I like you said that and, uh, if you're reading this, that means you and I have the common that, you know, like to be yourself. Uh, like the being you said, unashamed of yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And that <laughs> is actually literally the main branding of you, right? Yeah. That is like so, so <laughs> badass. I mean, so amazing. I mean, yeah. Um, so just years of like, not liking myself, even though I was still being creative and it's like, so I could be happy for everyone else where I would go to a wedding and not that I was faking it, but just kind of like, yeah. And I would leave and be like, Ugh, you know? <laughs> and so I was just like, I need to love myself more. Um, and that's why I, I keep saying what I'm saying. Like cancer forced me to do that. It was like, Hey, you almost lost your life. Like you better appreciate this, you know, and start, you know, tighten up. Um, even though I had named my business that before, way before I mean cancer. I didn't know that it would align later on in the end. Um, and so that's one thing like with my couples, when I meet them, like that's one thing that I push is like, yeah, I'm going to make sure you have those magazine type publication shots because I've been featured. I know what they're looking for, but I'm also going to make sure that you could be yourself in doing it, you know, or have those, those photos too, where you're not like, you know, so posed the whole time. Um, and it's just too much work to be, to not love yourself and be yourself because you, you, me, every person in the world, like has something different to bring into the universe. So it's like, if you're 
too busy like doing what someone else is doing, you're diminishing what you could put out. And I feel like when when people finally learn to really love themselves and fully operate in who they are, that's when they grow the most. Like even for me, a lot of people are like, how come you're not teaching wedding photography? I was like, because there's 81 million people doing it. Um, YouTube is there. I mean, I have a really good friend. She's killing it in wedding photography education. Like I refer people to her channel. Um, but for me, it was like, I want to teach video marketing and people are like, Oh, you know what I mean? Like that's my lane. And now I'm getting to go places and speak to people. I mean, even with you and things like that, that I'm like, if I would have been just following suit with, you know, everyone else, I would have never seen what God had for me when it comes to video marketing. So I just think when you really learn to like love yourself and tap into what you're good at, there's endless things that you figure out. It's like, Oh, I can do this. I can do that. And then, you just, you love yourself even more because you're like, okay, I want to discover more about me. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That is amazing how you can have this uh, value in yourself where, okay, I'm just gonna, this is my life. And I, you know, like, like that cancers like, kind of like awaken you that life is short and I want to be myself and I want to like myself. I want to stand up. And what is the secret that you can uh, get back up like that again and again, you know? Yeah. 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 It's funny you say that because, well, funny in similarity, um, cancer is not funny in any way. But um, yeah, like one of my friends, she just got diagnosed with um, a form of Hodgkin's lymphoma. Um, and she literally messaged me and was like, how did you make it through? Like, what was the what was the process like? Like all that stuff. Um, and I was just like. I sat there for a moment because I never want to pounce on people with my experience. So I never go into it like, yes, this, 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 I will never do that because that doesn't really encourage. It actually frightens people. Um, so I will ask simply like, what do you want to know? And I think even the, the same question, if someone's trying to figure out like how to love themselves more or things of that nature, just struggling with self-esteem, I would, the first question I would ask is like, where are you actually struggling like, you know, and, and really ask them to take the time to dig, not just go superficial and just like, oh, I don't like my hair. Like, that's not it. Because for even for me, like um, when it came to my body image, when I sat down and like really dug deep into why I was feeling, how I was feeling it had to do with a guy from high school. <laughs> OK, um, that used to compare my physical appearance. Um, to other women that were thicker and heavier than me. And so that's why for years I was like, I don't like my weight. I don't like my weight. I don't like my weight. Until, like I said, while I was sick, I was looking at old pictures of me before I was sick. And I was like, girl, there was nothing wrong with you. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So I just feel like you have to really want to change. You have to really like want to um, be healed from that area because it is bondage. And there's nothing like you can read a book, you can do every type of mantra or whatever. But if you really don't want to um, like be healed from it and feel better about yourself, it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I think the most important thing is like we have to really want the healing and the restoration. So what what actually in that uh, video uh, content marketing or wedding video that you really like uh, that makes you not giving up to do what you're doing right now? Seeing other businesses grow, like being that, you know, hope, because I think with video marketing, it's the it's one of the best ways to stand out. And I know some people say like, oh, but if I'm creating a commercial and they're creating a commercial, how does it make me different? And I'm like, that's exactly how it makes you different because people get to really see who's behind the brand, what's it doing. You know, you can have two hospitals creating the same kind of commercials. The the way it's delivered to the to the recipient would is and received is completely different. So I feel like uh, with video, it's helped me to help others. And when I when I see like some of my students or my clients um, go from I'm scared to get on camera to I just recorded 32 videos and I'm getting followers and, you know, converting. Of course, we all want to make money and make sales. Um, but just seeing them build that confidence Mm. It leads back to being unashamed, you know, again, because learn what they see is actually my video side. Unashamed imaging is my wedding side. But 
just building that confidence is like I'm still pushing some kind of you know being unashamed on because to get on video like you have to just like how you look um and and be okay with that I mean I've had days when I because I'm committed I had to do my live show and my hair wasn't the best um (laughs) today my hair is not exactly how I want it to be (laughs) um you know what I mean but I think once you really create good user generated content or content that really does resonate with your audience, they, you could wear the same shirt every day. They wouldn't know because the content is what they really are paying attention to. So for uh, dream burners out there who uh, want to learn to always not giving up to you with your passion and despite of anything that's happened uh, or despite of any circumstances, or even though they don't go to this school, you know, they don't have any uh, film video background kind of a, a bachelor degree, you know, but they want to uh, pursue their dreams. Um, any advice you can give to them? I think in this day and age, like, a degree is not necessarily required. Mm. Um, There are actually some businesses who are really pulling people in from their experience. And a degree is no longer that degree of separation (laughs) um, between getting a job and not getting a job, if if you want to call it a job, or being, you know, um, an advisor for someone or speaking. A lot of the people who were really, like, good in their lane they didn't go to school for what they're going, you know, and there's they're, what they're teaching and they're, they're teaching on big platforms. I mean, Gary Vaynerchuk, someone I follow, he yeah. sucked in school and he shows you the report card. Um, yeah. You know, um, Sean Combs, who is bad, the owner of Bad Boy, he, I think he went to college, but like basic level, something like that. Um, I might be wrong on that, but I mean, he's built so many different empires. So I think some people just have that knack Um, But I think for those who feel like they don't, I would say just like learn what you want to know. Just keep learning. You know, never feel like you know everything and go for it. The worst that can happen is like you can fail trying, but the fact that you tried is what will motivate you to learn more. Like everything I've done, everything I know is because I am constantly every day. Like this is not once a week, once a month, every day I'm reading something, learning something stretching pulling so that's really it (laughs) i believe that when you first start this you know like you have to invest in equipment right i mean this kind of business um you have to come up with the money first before you see the money coming in any advice you know like for people who starting up and you know you need to come up with the investment first how to keep pushing through Depending on what you want to produce video wise, of course, quality is going to differ between using like a smartphone and a DSLR, but you can still start with your smartphone. Um, And I say if you're starting with that, then you need good lighting. Like, for example, if I'm trying to do something now, right now in Florida, it's dark out, it's 530. You know, if I want something that's more engaging and inviting, I'm not going to film it now next to the window because it's too dark. Um, But there are things that you can invest in that don't cost a lot of money, like a ring light um, or LED light. You get those on Amazon anywhere from like 70 to $100. And I just feel like if you look at it as an investment, as opposed to like, oh man, I have to pay this for that. Like you'll make your money back like tenfold Um, and just, you know, just study. I have tons of resources on my blog. I actually have a series about how to film with your smartphone, Um, you know, and then I have different legs or tiers um, for for people who want to have like more higher quality or, you know, intermediate quality. So I just feel like done is better than perfection. And as you grow, like you'll learn what works for you. I mean, I literally sit in front of my HD webcam. I have my light coming from the window and sometimes when it's dark I use my ring light and I film doesn't make no difference because it's the content. So uh, Anisha if anyone want to know more about you and want to learn from your uh, website you know about video content and your and the strategy of making it uh, even the mobile phone uh, videography that will be so cool for people who are on the budget so where they can find you? Um, well, you can find me, the website is bit.ly slash learn with ACEDU, and I can send you that link. Um, on Instagram, it's learn with AC, and then on Facebook, um, it's bit.ly um, slash learn with AC. 
just end with the um with the AC for Facebook, but I can send you all those links um just in case. And um I can also link you to the free resources that I have on my site, which is where they could find the how to, you know, use your smartphone um to make budget friendly but still quality videos. Cause like I said, you can have sixty videos that are crap or you can have five that just do it. So it's all about like what you want to do. And um I also offer one on one sessions where I can sit with them and talk to them about like content ideas and strategy because some people want to do Facebook live but they're like what do I talk about and then as soon as I sit with them they're like how the heck did you just do that you're not even in my niche like I can talk to someone who is in a magazine industry or an artist and it's just something up here does something and then (laughs) yeah so it's all possible you just I think if you want it just go for it whether that's investing a little bit or whatever you want to budget um for it and just make it happen because videos aren't going anywhere and I've by 2021, it's going to be like the number one marketing method. So if you're not using video, you're just pushing yourself. Like this is the last thing I'll say. Someone who like sucks, but does what you do might excel simply because they have video marketing in their strategy and you don't mic drop. (laughs) (laughs) Oh my God. That's really, that's really cool. I can also share some um, speaking engagements that I have coming up with you because I'll kind of going around so that if people want to come and meet, but a lot of my content really is on my website, on the blog, um, and then I also have some like membership levels that it, that um, release some exclusive content um, that you won't find on YouTube or even on the blog because it's for people who will like who really want to do it. And so I kind of feel like they're investing, so it should be kept, you know, in the different tiers for access. So I can send you all of that, um, so you can link it. Thank you so much, Anisha, for your time. I know you're really busy and. I see that you, you know, in the Instagram it's like you always have uh, uh, projects to do, and it's really inspiring to see you keep Thank going you. on in spite of your uh, whatever you're battling on right now yeah absolutely thanks again <laughs> all right okay so thank you so much for dreamer squad out there who are listening and watching so stay tuned for the next upcoming dreamers chat all right thank you so much guys bye 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 This podcast is available on iTunes and other major podcast platforms. If you like this show, please subscribe and give your rating and review on iTunes. That means a lot to help the show keep going. You can also watch the video podcast series at youtube.com slash Lydia Isnanto. See you on the next brand new chat. Until then, remember to share your story with someone. Because you never know how one sentence of your life story could inspire others to rewrite their own.